بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم زيدون أحمد جوهر كلية طبية نوع Parasitology Part Two. Just before we start start this lecture, I just want to say about the Entamoeba coli, which just resemble Entamoeba histolytica, but it doesn't pathogenic parasite, so we can be miss miss distinguish between these two parasites, so we can use just like. Um, metronidazole uh, for intamoeba coli which is not uh, a pathogenic actually parasite so we must uh, first distinguish between these two parasites and it's just a laboratory test so first we will start about uh, talking about free living uh, parasite just like this that parasite that live in uh, normal soil or water or even sand uh, when they have mainly two species that uh, we deal with it so they can uh, cause uh, what we call the uh, diseases to to human being which are the Nigleria flori and the Acanthamoeba now Nigleria flori is mainly found in water free living parasite in water now human mainly get this parasite through inhalation of water through the nose mainly mainly water into the nose through swimming diving in water so water into the nose water is contaminated with the nigillaria fluoride so it, it will immediately cross the cribriform palate and into the brain the mucus you know the mucus membrane that's lining the nasal cavity into the brain through the uh, cribriform palate it will engulf the brain eating the brain these bacteria these parasites is eating brains so it just will uh, cause mainly first nausea vomiting headache and uh, mainly headache these are symptoms that are, would be clear for for us but uh, unfortunately we cannot do anything for this parasite so the human will or the individual patient will pass within four to five days now they in the in the very uh, good country they put in uh, some notification about the presence of amoebic meningitis they meant the niglaria flori now niglaria flori are found in three stages the amoebic trophozoid the flagellated trophozoid and the cystic trophozoid now the flagellated trophozoid is the trophozoid that we can found in water and even in uh, in water, even this is also can found in water, but mainly the flagellated because it, uh, it is it uh, the flagella help it in swimming in the water and it in the nose on the patient or individual. Now the amoebic trophozoite is the infected, the infective stage of this, uh, sorry, the diagnostic stage of this parasite. Now the infective stage is the flagellated trophozoite and the cyst. The only one who can replicate is the amoebic stage. The flagellated stage could not replicate and form a new parasite. Now, uh, swimming, I told about uh, the water that contaminated with this parasite is the the water that are stable water, which is lakes and pool swimming water. Now, this is a very good illustration for the. Nigillaria flora life cycles, life cycle, and with the acanthamoeba, I will talk about it later. This is the parasite, which is the flagella form. The flagella is not infective. I say the flagella is the infective with the with the cyst, but the diagnostic stage is mainly the amoebic stage of this parasite. Now, trophozoite in the CSF all these tissue, you know, in the brain can cause damage to the brain tissue. Now we'll just move over to the other parasite, which is from the free living parasite, the acanthamoeba. The acanthamoeba is infectious parasite that can cause uh, infection to the lower respiratory tract, uh, cause ulceration and from ulceration and broken skin, can enter through broken skin, uh, can cause amoebic encephalitis, was also brain damage and granulomatous and maybe also cause the the central nervous system affected the maybe uh, meningocephalitis have been caused by members of 
Gene of Acanta Meiva usually involved uh, contact with the soil, stagnant water, and it's usually caused chronic infection to the skin and central nervous system and corneal oscillation. Now, corneal oscillation is special uh, signs of uh, infection of this type of parasite. Now, just uh, one important thing with this parasite, the Acanta Meiva is uh, that it can be infective in the two stages the cyst and the trophozoite can be found in tissue now this is uh, a corneal oscillation caused by the parasite acanthamoeba now we move on to another subject which is uh, the miscellaneous the miscellaneous protozoa now the miscellaneous protozoa are, are large family members it can contain many members now these members are only similar in one thing in that they are unicellular but the other thing the diagnostic stage the living style the prevention treatment and life cycle they are all differences difference between them now one of the most important miscellaneous protozoa are the plastocystic plastocystis hemonesis now, uh, one of these species of this uh, family is the Cryptosporidium uh, parvum. Cryptosporidium parvum. Now, Cryptosporidium parvum is an infective human parasite. The infection primary occurs by ingestion of oocyte in contaminated food or water. Oocyte, mainly oocyte, through contaminated water. Or food. Now, the patient complain mainly with diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, and weight loss, abdominal pain. This condition may be fatal, particularly in children and in the person with immunosuppression, like uh, AIDS, HIV person, or persons that have been taking uh, immunosuppressant uh, drugs like steroids, uh, etc. Now this parasite can be uh, multiplied by two uh, two types, like uh, it can form sporulation from spores, and uh, by binary vision. And uh, the plastocystic hormonesis initiated ingestion fecally contaminated water, as I told you before, and cause diarrhea, vomiting, blah blah blah. So this is just like other parasites, ingestion in. Uh, GIT system by ingestion by mouth by contaminated water and food. Now we will move to another families which are the ciliated ciliated class which are the Balanthidium coli, one of the species that can cause human diseases. Balanthamidium coli this is the shape of Balanthidium coli under the microscope you can see just the cilia is the most important feature here ciliated now first this uh, this parasite in the human the human the host by sister stage by in a, by contaminated water or food then will cause uh, then will undergo its exhaustion in the small intestine as shown in this picture and then multiplication in the colon and uh, exert from trophozoid for uh, incestation from the trophozoid to the cystic stage then it will exert it through the fecal material now uh, it may it may be into two type of infection maybe asymptomatic there is no sign or symptom to the patient contaminated with this type of parasite or it may be uh, symptomatic. Now, in the first infection or uh, acute infection, it will cause colitis, colitis and the abdominal pain, and amoebic dysentery, abscess or ulcer in the large intestine. Now, in the chronic stage, like in a person with asymptomatic for a long time, and then turn suddenly like to be symptomatic. There is also tender colon, tenderness of colon. Now, ichiasia, ichiasia, ichiasia means guzaz, 
and diarrhea alternative with uh, with constipation this is the main signs and symptoms for this for this parasite now this parasite can treat by oxy tetracycline flagine 500 milligram uh, or by for 10 days or by metronidazole flagine for prevention just like uh, others by personal hygiene and uh, sanitary conditions uh, hope you enjoyed please subscribe press like thanks so much